According to journalist, Axios journalist Barack Ravid, Benjamin Netanyahu wants Alan Dershowitz to represent Israel. Particularly of Israel, you've been very, um, you know, potent in speaking out in favor of Israel's right to defend itself. I, um, I've read reports, and I don't know if they're true, that you might be representing Israel before the International Court of Justice. I don't know if you can comment on that, Alan, or if you just want to talk about whether there's a case there. There is there. a case there, and of course I would be honored to speak up on behalf of Israel in any capacity. Um, it's not a strong case. Uh, Israel is not engaged in, in genocide. It's I have to say, I was this morning when I discussed it with my friends, Jenny Sternweiner, colleagues, comrades, we almost all thought it was a joke. These people live in such a bubble this Jewish supremacist bubble that they don't see that Alan Dershowitz is not taken seriously anymore. He's an object of complete ridicule. Why would you even do that? If you watch the recent interviews he did, he did a, an amusing one with this Qatari interlocutor. And he said, Alan Dershowitz said, Universe, uh, UNICEF, is Hamas. UNESCO is Hamas. The climate movement is Hamas. And he, Human Rights Watch is Hamas. And finally, the interlocutor, Qatari, he said, Professor Dershowitz, is there anything that's not Hamas? <laughs> I mean, the man is. All right, he's older. I hope I can retain my lucidity when I'm his age. Otherwise, I beg and plead with my friends, Norm, stop. You know, Alan Dershowitz obviously has no friends wow. because they would have told him, Al, your day has passed. <laughs> so why would they choose him? Actually, somebody tweeted, if Alan Dershowitz is representing Israel, that Norman Finkelstein should represent South Africa. <laughs> Actually, I have to say, I would get a good laugh out of that. But they have very competent people. There's John Dugard, who apparently played a big role in writing the um, South Africa genocide brief. Uh, there's another guy, Vaughn Lowe, who's excellent. Uh, they have good people. Why they would uh, Choose Dershowitz is beyond me. Actually, they do have, there's um, Yoram Dinstein, and there are others who, I don't like their politics, but they certainly can make a compelling case before the court. What the South Africans are asking for, for I should be clear, they're calling on the international justice to issue effectively what we call in our society a temporary restraining order. If I can explain for your audience, there is a genocide convention. Israel is a signatory to that convention. South Africa is a signatory to that convention. And South Africa is saying that Israel is guilty of genocide. It's in breach of the convention. Israel says it's not in breach of the convention. And therefore, that constitutes what's called a dispute under international law. And that being a dispute, the International Court of Justice, which uh, can arbitrate on disputes pertaining to international conventions, as is the Genocide Convention, the International Court of Justice can decide who's right and who's wrong in this matter. In this dispute, South Africa wants to expedite the process because the genocide's happening before our eyes in real time. And the way you can expedite the process is to say, we, we are not asking for a final judgment by the ICJ, the International Court of Justice. We're not asking for a final judgment, whether it is or isn't genocide. What we're asking for is something else. We're, we're asking that you acknowledge that we're making a plausible case for genocide and therefore 
if we can use the example, a temporary restraining order should be put on Israel until the whole case can be adjudicated. Uh, so that's their demand. It was very well done. So on the merits, I would say they make a plausible case. But these things are never decided by the merits. They're not decided by the law. They're decided by politics. You can't get around that. And so what do you have now? The ICJ consists of 15 judges. The 15 judges comprise the Security Council and 10 other states. So Russia, China, the US, the UK, and France, OK? The five permanent members, they have representatives on the ICJ. So you think to yourself, oh, great. OK, we lose with the US for sure. We lose with the UK for sure. France is a question mark, given the statements it's been making about what's going on in Gaza. I would call it a question mark. Yeah. Uh, and then we say, oh, great. We have one question mark, and then we have Russia and China. And you think, OK, we have Russia and China on our side. Well. Russia is now being challenged or accused of genocide in Ukraine. And that's a pending case in the ICC, the International Criminal Court. So do they want to open up the Pandora's box of that genocide convention, which might backfire and be used against them? Very unlikely. China, well, as everybody knows, China is being accused of genocide against the Uyghurs. So do they want to open up the Pandora's box of the genocide convention and it's used against them, I would say very unlikely. So right now we have one of five, which is France, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Then Germany's on this year. Forget it. They'd vote for it. They'd be worse than Israel on it. They, they would vote for the genocide. Yeah. It, it, we agree it's genocide, but we're for it. Right, exactly. Then Uganda, which always votes with Israel, don't ask me why, it's on. So we have four, um, uh, probably will not vote for its plausibility. Then Germany, then Uganda, so that's six. Morocco is on, Morocco will vote, I think, yes, it's plausible case and a few others, it'll be very tough. They need eight votes. They need eight votes. If you want to bring it up now, are you in front of a screen? Uh, yeah. So just go International Court of Justice, judges today, judges today. And we'll see which countries are up there. Current members, so America, forget, hopeless cause. Uh, Russian, I would say unlikely. Slovakia, maybe a yes. Slovakia, France, I would say 50-50. So we have two. Morocco, I say a yes. So we That's have three. Great. Somalia, probably a yes. That will be four. China, probably a no or an abstention. Uganda, a no. India, well, since Modi's committing genocide against Muslims, I, I would say a no. And he's close with Netanyahu. Right. Uh, Jamaica, Jamaica, maybe a yes. Maybe a yes. Lebanon, a yes. Japan is so terrified of the United States, I would call it a no. Germany, I would call a no. Australia, no, 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 no. Brazil, definitely a yes. Oh, so I, I you got, got seven? I got six and a half because we don't know half. about France. Okay. I would get seven. That would be my guess. Yeah. All we need is one to flip to reach eight. It's hard to get one to right. flip. But so. you've been obviously saying from the get-go that this is genocide, as have a lot of... I, 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 I had a very simple argument. It was so simple. I, sometimes, you know, the most obvious is also the most correct. What is it? Act... Razor. Occam's, ra Occam's razor. Occam's razor. 
if you say that you're not going to let any food, water, fuel, electricity into a civilian population, can you tell me what you're advocating? Genocide. Yeah, that's not, to me, that's a no brainer. Right. You don't really need much more. I mean, obviously, if you read the brief, there's a lot more you can right. add to it. But to my thinking, that was a uh, case close, as they say.